So in this video, we just shall look at how our maximum flow problem works with the help of an iterative improvement method. So iterative improvement method is one of the most popular methods. So what it does is that it just obtains a feasible solution and then what it does, it just changes the uh, feasible solutions uh, prop optimality such a way that the optimal solution is being found. So which means that uh, smaller factors which are just having uh, uh, inside our feasible solution just alters it to find or to identify the optimal solution out of the given problem okay so this is how our uh, iterative improvement method works so right now we just shall look at our maximum flow problem right so maximum flow problem is nothing but it is used to uh, transfer the maximum uh, data through the medium so which means that it might be a form of the maximum water flowing through a pipe or it might be in a form of the maximum data which is being sent over the network so likewise it might uh, vary depending upon uh, the factors right so here we just shall look at it with the help of an example. So just consider this particular example, right? So here there are certain things which you have to uh, note down. So uh, we just have to come across with sink. Then we just have to come across with source. And then we just have to come across with capacity. Okay, so these are the three important things which we have to uh, learn before getting into this particular problem. Uh, so sync node is nothing but it is a node which doesn't have any outgoing node. So for example, here your six is going to be your sync because it doesn't have any outgoing node. So the next one is your source node. So source node is nothing but it is a kind of a node where you will not be having any uh, incoming nodes to it. So for example, here one uh, is your source because it doesn't have any incoming nodes to it. So the capacity is nothing but the weight which is uh, used to represent the edges which is connecting the vertices right so these uh, capacity from 1 to 2 will be uh, 2 so likewise this is what we just mentioned it as our capacity which is nothing but the weight of the graph is being considered as a capacity so right now we just shall solve this particular example okay so as said earlier we are just going to identify one of the feasible solution right and then what we are going to do is that we are just going to alter the property such a way that uh, you are obtaining the uh, optimal solution for it okay so currently what we shall do is that we just shall consider a path okay so what i do i just start the path from one okay so one to two i'm just traveling my uh, node right now so what is the capacity in which it could travel so it could travel the maximum of two and then i'm just marking two out of two right so the next node so two to three i'm just considering so here the capacity is five so what i do is that i just mark uh, two out of five right so the next one three to six so three to six is uh, my another path which just can hold two so what i do i just mark it as two to two right so here right now looking at the particular problem we just know that we just have uh, traveled from our source to our destination so this is one of the feasible solution so data right now has a maximum flow of two so it is one of the feasible solution which we have obtained for this maximum flow problem so as said in iterative improvement method what we are going to do is that we are just going to alter the particular feasible solution such a way that you are going to obtain your uh, optimal solution so for example here we just shall consider what are the left of nodes so while looking at the left of nodes we just can say that from 2 to 5 we could uh, take the maximum of 3 and 5 to 6 we could take the maximum of 3 right so here uh, 1 to 2 it could take only the maximum of 2 right so you cannot add any further to it so here considering it so 1 to 4 you could take the maximum of 3 and then 4 to 3 we just shall take the maximum of 1 so what happens over here is that we could add another uh, one uh, source from or one data from 1 to 2 sorry 1 to 4 and 4 to 3 so what we could do is that we could uh, somehow reduce the uh, flow from 3 to 6 if we could add the 1 to 4 4 to 3 and 3 to 6 okay so what we are trying to do is that we are just trying to reduce 1 out of 3 to 6 so whether we just shall uh, look at it and we can say whether there is a possible way or not so if we just look at it instead of uh, traveling the two uh, path from 2 to 3 what we can do we just shall travel 1 to uh, 1 to 1 out of 5 and then 1 out of 2 we could travel 1 to uh, 5 through one path so likewise we just shall alter it so i just list out it with the help of an example so for example you just shall make it as a step 1 okay so in step 2 what am i doing is that i am just reducing this path size so this path's uh, maximum capacity is 2 out of 2 i am just trying to reduce it by 1 so how i can reduce it is so let me just draw the graph again okay so i am just reducing it such a way that okay so here 5 here 4 
right so 2 out of 2 is passed over here so again uh, instead of passing the entire 2 over here i am just passing 1 out of 5 over here right so another 1 out of uh, 3 i am just passing it over here so such a way that the capacity 2 over here is being split up into two nodes such a way that your 3 out of 6 will be turning into 1 out of 2 and then similarly your 5 out of 5 to 6 you will be having 1 out of 4 so here also the same thing so you are here you just have identified the same maximum capacity of 2 but here we could add another node. So how we could add another node? We could add another path over here. So in step three, what I'm de doing is, okay, so I'm just marking down the graph again. So step three is not visible, so I'm just mark it over here. So step three, right? So I just draw the graph. One, two, three, six, five, and four, right? So we just shall uh, mark the previous paths. So two out of two, right? So here 1 out of 3, so here 1 out of 5, so here 1 out of 4, so 1 out of 4. So what we are doing over here is that we are just adding another uh, one capacity in this particular path. So what I do, I just add one over here, so which means 1 out of 3 I will be passing over here. So here uh, what I will do, I just pass 1 out of 1. So here the total capacity already we just have 1 out of 2, we are just adding another one, so we are just having 2 out of 2. So your outcome will be a maximum of 3, so maximum flow over here will be 3. So if we just look at the problem again, whether uh, if we alter certain value, whether it will be possible for you to uh, travel more, we just have to look at it. So if you just look at the problem, uh, we, whether it is possible for us to uh, travel more, so it is no uh, possible way to travel it. So how we have to identify is that we just have to identify uh, by increasing the paths over here or reducing the path over here. So likewise, we just shall make it out. So uh, after altering all the properties, we just came to know that uh, 3 is the maximum maximum flow out of it. So what we are doing is that we are just finalizing the path and then we are just mentioning the maximum flow. So the maximum flow which could be obtained uh, in this particular path is 3 and then uh, in which path we are just going to obtain. So we are just going to uh, travel in the path 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to uh, 6. So it will be uh, covering a total of uh, 1 and then uh, again 1 to 4 right and then uh, 4 to 3 and then uh, 3 to 6 it will be uh, covering a maximum of 1 and then again 1 to 2 and then 2 to 5 and then 5 to 6 so it will be calculating the uh, sorry it will be obtaining uh, 1 so totally you will be having 3 so in this particular path you are transferring one data in this particular path 1 and then this particular path 1 so likewise uh, tra traveling it we just have obtained the optimal solution this is the optimal solution for the maximum flow problem okay so this is how we just solved the maximum flow problem with the help of an iterative approach.